Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Caregiver Circle, where caregivers connect and are empowered to care. I am your host and fellow caregiver, Kelly Abernathy Porch, and we are so happy that you have decided to join us on tonight. This evening, our special guest is not only a life giver and a caregiver, but she is an awesome woman of God. She is a resident of South Brunswick, New Jersey, and her name is Marcella D. Moore. She's the founder and facilitator of both Motivate and Pray and Caring for the Caregiver's Monthly Support Call. And she has been a, a true inspiration to me and is part of the reason that I do what I do. So I want us all to welcome Marcella Moore on this evening. Marcella, are you there? Yes, ma'am. I am in the house. Amen. Thank you so much. We are so excited to have you with us this evening uh, for our live call, which we do once a month. But before we get started, I'd just like to open up with a brief word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for this time. I just thank you even just for another day, Lord, another opportunity to serve you, another opportunity to to worship and to share with your people, Lord. I thank you personally for my healing, Lord. I thank you for being with me. I thank you for being with my brothers and my sisters, Lord. And I pray that this time will minister to them. And most of all, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be present and that you would have your way this evening during this call. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Again, Marcella, it's great to have you with us. and. It has been our custom that our guests, if we could just start off, if you could share with us your caregiving uh, caregiving story, that would be great. Amen, Kelly. Uh, first, I just wanted to thank you just for this awesome opportunity to uh, share this space with you tonight, and I'm so grateful to be here. I'm always uh, excited and delighted to be able to speak life into the lives of others, especially through my story. Because one thing that I've realized throughout my journey, that there's certainly purpose to my pain. So, um, again, thank you so much for allowing me to be here tonight. And my prayer is that everyone who is attached to this call tonight, those who will listen uh, to the radio broadcast, that even as they listen tonight, that they will be encouraged and inspired to uh, continue on this journey with joy, with peace, with love and understanding and knowing that God has not forgotten our labor of love and that which we do when we care for the people that are in our care. And my caregiven story uh, started about two years ago. I was sitting at my desk at work and I received a telephone call from my mother's internal medicine doctor uh, notifying me that uh, my mom had a huge mass on her lungs and that uh, it's so big that she suggested right away that I get my mom to a specialist so that they can take a biopsy of it to determine if it's cancerous or not. And it was overwhelming. The news was overwhelming. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was taking place and what was going to happen. Um, But, you know, did everything do needed to do, got her to the necessary doctors, and long story short, it was diagnosed as cancer. And at that time, They still, they did not know if it was stage three or four. They had to do some additional tests um, because of the location of the mass on her lungs. So we went through that and, you know, it was, it was, it was overwhelming. It was a lot. Just to any time anyone hears that word cancer, regardless of what type of cancer it is, any time you hear the word cancer, it has fear attached to it because we know so many stories that different ones have gone through concerning it. I've experienced in my life my 38-year-old aunt left here about 20 years ago with breast cancer. So, um, you know, I continued with my mom, took her on doctor's appointments. Uh, God blessed her because initially they didn't, when they did diagnosis, they looked at it high stage four. Uh, I'm sorry, high stage three, uh, tapping into stage four. So uh, it was recommended that she go through chemo first, which she did. Um, that was a, a life-changing uh, process within itself. And then she ended up having surgery to move, remove part of her lungs. Then she had the radiation. Then she ended up having 
um, proton therapy. Then she had, you know, another treatment. There were so many things that were attached to her survival as long as she did. And, and at the same time, believing God and trusting God to continue to give me the strength, give her the courage to endure. Uh, my mom was a fighter, and I, I'm so blessed by that because in her last two years of being here, she was strong, she was tall, she endured the process, and she believed God. So that's basically uh, that part of my caregiving journey. That was my most recent uh, caregiving journey. That that caregiving journey had a tremendous impact on my life because I was very close to my mom, and I was there for all of the ups and downs, and it was truly an emotional time. But I'm still standing here today, and I don't want to say unfortunately because, and that, that's the human side of me that says unfortunately, but fortunately my mom has made her transition in this past July. She was promoted, and she dwells in the kingdom of the Most High God, and I do celebrate that. So in summary, that's a part of... Um, a summarize a short version of my caregiver story. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I like that you said that, because that is the truth of the matter, that she was promoted. And that's one of the things that we have to remember as believers, that that really is, that's the promotion, that's the goal, what we aim for. And I know out of our flesh, you know, we hold on and we want them to be, you know, here with us forever. So I, I thank you for sharing that with us and putting it, you know, that way. Um, and I know for you and, and knowing you personally as well that your life as many caregivers lives are, are consumed with the caring and with the daily routines, which aren't even necessarily routine um, because they're filled with so many different tasks and that, that we need to do. But tell if you can tell us how the last several months of having to adjust from having such a busy and unpredictable schedule and caring for your mom, what has this transition been like going from that to now, you know, establishing this, this new, like I know you've put it before, your new normal. If you could share that with us, that would be great. Yeah, my new normal. It was, it was um, a major, with a capital M, major adjustment. Um, because the last, this, this year, 2014, my mom had a busy life in terms of doctor's appointments, but this was the most um, challenging time because it was spent with ICC and an ICU on several occasions and being told that she was not going to come through the ICU and then she comes out of the ICU and she goes back in and she comes out again. So it's very emotional. So there, one thing that I realize, even uh, as I continue on and I try to share with other people, when you care for someone and you go for, and that person has had a busy life in terms of treatment and medications and all that, and then you go from doing that with them and then you go from their transition, there's a twofold healing process that has to take place. First, you have to heal uh, and, and learn to live. Um, without that busyness of life. And, and I look at my calendar now, when I open it up, I have, it's just full from January through July, just full. And even after that, because I had appointments scheduled out for her through the end of this year, I still get calls now from doctors calling to confirm appointments that I made for her because she has so many doctors and so many different things, and, and it's impossible for all of them to know that she is no longer here. But I, my, my calendar, I open it up, and it's, it's, it's full. It's highlighted stuff. It's stuff written, written in pen. It's directions to here and directions to there. So when I look at that, that, that full life that I had, and then I look at I no longer have to do this, there is a major adjustment that takes place. But the one thing that for me that may be different from the next person is that uh, during this time with my mother, especially in the last year and a half or so, I put my foot to the pedal when it comes down to ministry, when it comes down to doing the things that I got, believe God has called me to do. And because I have a lot of those things, I've replaced some of them with all the doctor's appointments and, and, and all the different things and the testing and all that that I've had to do with her. And I replaced them in a way where not where it's um, trying to make up for that time, but I replace it in a way where I realize that everything that I went through with my mother, that preparation mode 
I take that and I take the, 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 the busy days because I've got, on some days I would get up in the morning and I would go to work for a couple of hours, leave from there, uh, drive all the way to pick her up, take her across town to get a treatment for something where we would be there two and three hours, bring her back home, get up in the morning and do the same routine over and over and over again. It took me a long time to even be able to sleep peaceful at night because my body was just so used to doing all of that. But because uh, I trust God because I love him, because I believe that my steps are ordered by him, because I believe that he loves me in a way that he will guide and direct me. It made it so much easier. It And it was not easy, but knowing him and trusting him and allowing him to usher me through each time, I, I fell into that place of heaviness and loneliness and not knowing what to do. I really, really locked into his grace. And and one thing that I know for sure more than any other time in my life that I am so clear about um, what God's grace is sufficient truly means because that is the thing that has kept me through this time because my mother transitioned and I also transitioned. My life shifted, Mm -hmm. my life changed, and I had to begin to see things in a whole other way. And, And in addition to that, dealing with everything that was going on in the inside of me, dealing with the dreams and the visions that I had for her because that's the one thing. When we are in the kingdom of God, when we trust God, we do because God's word teaches us that he is a healer. So we hold on to the very end. We believe in miracles. We believe in signs and wonders. We believe and we know that God has the ability to touch our loved ones. We believe that he is still in the healing business. So I was open to that. I was open to that even to the very end. I was open to that. So if God wanted to put his hand on the forehead of my mother and she got up and made a decision to be healed and walk throughout this earth, I would have been fine with that as well. But because that was not my story, I I set myself in the position of acceptance. And when we begin to accept things, uh, there was a song a long time ago by um, Mr. Clean White. He said, accept what God allows. So you're better off anyway. So I have embraced the fact that uh, my mother's no longer here, and I trust that it was the will of God. And because I know that and I know the heart of my mother and that she would want me to go forth doing that which I do best, those are the things that help me transition. Those are the reasons why when I wake up in the morning on those days where I felt like I cannot make it any longer because the pain was too great, those are the times when I made a decision within myself to continue to move forward because I know that if I did that, that there was a greater reward on the other side. And I did not like feeling um in that low place. I didn't like feeling in that low place. So because I didn't like feeling that low place, I just made a decision day after day. And I still do to this day. There are days today I wanted to pick up the phone and call my mother and tell her something, but that was not my reality. I accepted it. I grinned. I smiled. And I said, you know what, Mommy? I can just tell you because I believe that you hear me. I believe that you know everything that I'm facing right now because the Bible talks about the cloud of witnesses. And I believe that she is there cheering me on, you know. So um, I hope that answers what you asked me, Kelly. No, it, no, it definitely does. Um, so many things out of that um, when you were sharing. One of the themes that came to my mind was that a loud, loud theme was that it's a decision that we have to make. So you were saying making a decision to move forward, making a decision to be open whether or not the Lord decided to heal here or in heaven, making a decision of positioning yourself in a mode of acceptance. Like all of those different things you shared started, and the crux of it is with us in making a decision. And so I I thank you so much. I just think that is so very rich uh, what you shared. Um, When you were talking about, um, you know, even when you're the life, the busy schedule and going to different doctor's appointments and things, you you touched upon still working in and in, in working out your ministries and those things that the Lord called you to do. And I know for many people who are caregivers, some I know in the beginning maybe when it's new for them, there are some that put everything on hold 
you know, the Lord has given, I believe, each and every one of us different dreams and visions, things that we are to carry out our purpose. And sometimes we become so immersed and maybe it's that we feel even overwhelmed that we put those things to the side. And if you could just kind of speak on that and what your thoughts are about doing that. Because on the surface it can seem and feel very legit, a legitimate thing to do is that we just totally decrease and, you know, neglect those things. So if you can speak on that, that would be great. Well, for me, Kelly, it's a funny thing because um, I became a single parent in the year 2000. So at that time, my daughter was 10 and my son was 6. So I raised them. And then in 2012, my son graduated high school. And you're talking about somebody saying glory, hallelujah, um, (laughs) because (laughs) high school was very challenging for my son, and I was delighted. I called the school the week before to just so that they can assure me that my son will be graduating and that we would not be having any drama and that they would be calling his name for him to walk across that stage because I no longer wanted to have a relationship with South Brothers High School. I wanted to end our relationship. So for me, that was in, in, in June of 2012, and when I, I, you know, I was able to exhale. My son made it through high school. Now he's going to school, and, you know, he's going to college. So I have one in and other. So the first time in a long time, I'm, I felt like, oh, my, now I'm, now I'm getting my life back. I'm getting ready to have my life. You know, I maintain my children um, from 2000 up to 2012, 12 years on my own maintaining them. So, yes. Now it's time for me to do everything I want to go back to school. You know, I had all these dreams and stuff, and that was in June. And then, I, and, and then in October of the same year, my mom was diagnosed. So I went from the, that one stage of caregiving, and that's why when I talk about caregivers, it's not just um, caregiving when you're caring for a sick family member or friends, but we are caregivers. When we're mothers, we are caregivers. We're taking care of our children, and there are so many single mothers who are out there who feel just as overwhelmed taking care of a healthy child as a person who is taking care of a sick uh, family or sick um, friend. It's that it's on that same magnitude because if they don't have help, they feel overwhelmed just as much. It's just the difference is just that sickness piece, but that feeling of being a caregiver and no one understands and no one helps, it has that same stigma upon a, a single parent. It can, I should say, has that same stigma upon a single parent. So I, I went from one stage of caregiving in a sense to this next care stage of caregiving when it came down to my mom. So when I got the news about her and when I started learning more about what it, she was diagnosed with lung cancer, when I started learning more about it and, um, you know, the whole insurance piece, there are so many aspects to it. We started with one set of doctors and then we found out that half of them don't accept their insurance. Then we had to start all over again. So that, that was all in 2012. By the time 2013 came around, I became mad. I became mad and angry with the enemy, with the elements of the world, and I just, something in me burst in me that for every time they, the, the doctors tell me something negative about my mother, I am going to go find some type of ministry work to do. I am going to put my foot to the gas pedal, and I am going to make this happen. And, yeah, initially, I thought that, you know what, again, now I can't do anything that I want to do. I can't be who I want to be. Here I go again having to take care of someone all over again. So in my determination and my decision to to pick up myself and pick up my ministry and pick up and do the thing that God has called me to do, God, God birthed that in me because one thing that um, happened is that when I had to take my mother for proton therapy, and it's all the way on the other side of town. And when I found out I had to take her for seven and a half weeks first, and then they extended it to eight and a half weeks, I was in school. So when I found out about that, I said, you know what, it's not a problem. I'll just take her every day. I'll get my homework and my schoolwork, and I'll sit in the area, and I'll do my homework. Well, what, my mother ended up going to proton therapy for eight and a half weeks. And not one time did I do homework there. Every single day 
I ministered to someone, I spoke life to someone, I held babies that would never allow anybody to hold them. I had teenagers whose parents came to me and said that they never talked to anybody. I had staff members come to me and talk to me and felt like they were so overwhelmed because they couldn't stand seeing these patients come in here. Stage 4 cancer patients all around. And that just caused the baby in me to leap like never before. And oftentimes when we talk about babies leaping within us in the body of Christ, we talk about somebody who is like-minded and has the same spirit as we do. And when we connect together, the baby leaps. But for me, in the midst of hopelessness, in the midst of people who thought that God had no concern about them and that God did not love them, that thing right there caused that baby on the inside of me to leap like crazy. And that was the thing that finally pushed me all the way into everything that God has called me to be. So while I understand um, people wanting to put everything to the side because it just seems so overwhelming and looks like it can't be done, but when we align ourselves with God and we, we just say, God, you know what? You know who I am. You created me. You're the project manager of my soul. You ordained my steps, and I surrender. I just give everything to you because within myself, I could not do it. If you had to depend and lean on me as Marcella, myself in my flesh, in this human body, it could not happen. But God ignited something that was so strong on the inside of me, and every time I felt like I was in the company of someone who could not see and did not see any light in their lives, I just believed that I was the light, that God ordered my steps in the way that I was able to do it. So anyone, if you're listening to this call tonight, I know that things can be overwhelming, but because I believe in the caregiver journey that self-love is not selfish, I believe that we have to invest in ourselves and with ourselves and in our lives, that we have to do things to allow uh, our, ourselves to continue to see clarity within our lives because I believe that, I encourage you, even, whatever you find something that you love to do, I don't care what it is, if it's, if it's knitting, if it's, snow, if, it's, if it's writing a poem, I don't care what it is, find something that you love to do and make sure that you continue to do it on that journey because when God finds you moving and God finds you walking, he will ignite something in you and that will give you a strength. You're talking about strength? That's how I received my strength every day. And, again, every time they came to me with some negative news about my mother, I was like, okay, now I've got to do a prayer conference call. I've got to do this. i got to do this. I was so determined that my foot was going to the – had my foot on the gas pedal, and I was taking off. I didn't know where I was going most of the time, but I know that I wasn't going to stay there and, and allow self-pity to dwell upon me because that's the thing that especially when we're in God and throughout my life I've prayed for people I've had loss in my life before I lost my first child and then three weeks from there my dad died at the age of 45 years old so I've experienced loss before but the impact that my mother had on my life was completely different and it found me in a different stage in a different place and I am so glad. You hear me when I tell you that I'm so glad? I am so glad that while my mom was still here, she got an opportunity to see me moving in the fullness of what God has called me to do because she's seen me move before. And she's seen me move and she's seen me deal with um, people who make you not want to do what God has called you to do. And when she began to hear me on my prayer calls and different things like that, when she would be with me, there was just a joy that would ring from the midst of her soul that gave me life as well. So, again, I just encourage you, anything, any dream, any vision, anything that you have to do, you may not be able to do it in the fullness right now, but if you just start, you give God an opportunity just to turn some things on on the inside of you, and those things will allow life to come to you in the midst, on the midst of your journey. Amen, amen. That that is so. Oh my, that is just so profound. And you know, sometimes, you know, people you become overwhelmed with the feeling of being overwhelmed, and the Lord is just waiting for us to take that step, waiting for us again to make a decision 
that we are going to do what he said to do. The word says that obedience is better than sacrifice. And I, I think about when you share that story about how, okay, when you found out what the schedule is, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure if you said it tonight, but when we were talking about that eight and a half weeks, I believe it was every day, right? Didn't you have to go every day, or was it five days a week? I can't. Monday through Friday, every day. Yes, every day. And I'm sure that can just seem and sound so overwhelming, but you made a decision like, okay, you know what, you embrace that. It's not that, but I can do my homework. I can do this. And it's like once we say okay to him, once we yield to his will, then he opens up the door. And I believe that's when that grace was ignited. And you see that you thought you were going there just for your mom, and look at what he did by touching the lives of people who may not have ever known who God was. And I think that's the thing that we have to remember even for our individual lives. We get so caught up in our own situation, in our own, you know, pain that, we, um, that we're paralyzed and we do nothing and we do neglect those gifts. And the Lord is waiting for us. He has so much in store for us, but he is waiting for us to make a decision in our mind that we're going to serve him, make a decision that we are going to yield to his will in our lives. So I I thank you so much for sharing that. It was something it was funny. I was kinda of trying to take notes because there were so many rich um tidbits that you provided just in sharing that story. But I believe that is for every single person that's on this on this line and that will listen to this call later who are caregivers. Do not neglect the gift that he has given to you because he will use and can use that very gift to strengthen you and to give you what it is you need. And, you know, Marcel, if you could just even share with um, everyone about how mo- what Motivate and Pray is, because it was during this process, if I'm correct, um, that this was birthed. So could yes. you tell us about that? Motivate and Pray, it's, it's funny how Motivate and Pray started. That That is um, my baby. That's my ministry. On January 19, 2013, and, and Mind you, my mom was diagnosed in October 2012. And I have always been the one in my family who everybody talks to and they need to be encouraged and uplifted. I was always that person. So one day, um, after dealing with my mother and everything, and still dealing with people and encouraging them from all over, because for a long time, Kelly, as you know, I never really voiced what was going on with my mother in detail. Um, I think it was probably in the latter part of... um, Maybe March or some of this of last of this year, I think, or maybe last year that I, you know, told everyone what was really going on with my mother and what I was dealing with. Um, so I text my my um, one girlfriend in Kentucky, and then everybody else was in New Jersey, and it was a total of nine of us, including myself. And I said, you know what? If I had a conference call with you all for about 20 minutes or so on a Saturday morning, would you all call? And then that way, you know, we can pray together and, you know, I'll speak life to you. And if you have a prayer request, we can do it like that. They was like, yes, yes, yes. So that was January 19th in 2013. And at the time, I didn't have a name for it yet, but... You know, I know as it went on and I saw the effect of it, you know, the, the little eight people, they were, you know, they talked about it, then they began to tell people about it. So then I said, okay, so now something is happening here, you know, because now they're asking me if they can give the number to this one, they can give the number to that one. And, and then finally I said yes, and then I prayed about it, and the Lord said to me, I want you to motivate them and I want you to pray. And that's where the name comes from. A lot of people will say motivation in prayer or Whatever, but it's motivate and pray simple, simple. God told me to motivate and to pray. So um, initially I had a conference call line that I just, on this conference call line, you had to schedule the time and set the number of people. And I opened it up to 25, and that's all I wanted to do. I wasn't thinking about anything else. I just wanted to, you know, my little 25, my 24 myself, and that was it. It began, people started saying, I tried to call to the line, and I couldn't get in, and it was locked. So 
Um, I met a friend of mine one day, and she said to me, "You know what? You you have to you have to stop playing small and allow God to do what He wants to do in the midst of you. You need to do something about that little line there." And then I began to investigate, and I found um, a conference call line, the same one that my uh, church family uses. And I just went ahead and opened it up. And ever since then, we have people from Arizona, uh, California. Kentucky, Georgia, Rhode Island, Connecticut, North Carolina, South Carolina, New Jersey, New York, Virginia, West Virginia, Texas, Tennessee, um, so many other places who are part of this call every week. And we meet together every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we have a time of inspiration and motivation. And then we pray, and we spend some quality time praying for the needs of those who have sent in prayer requests. And this uh, motivating prayer is going on two years, and I had no idea when I said yes to it that it would become what it has become. And as you know, when you stated earlier, from that this past June, I started the caring for the caregivers, and then we have that we just celebrated a year anniversary, the Women Only Prayer Call. So all of these things were birthed out of the journey. My mother is fully responsible. I don't even know if I've ever told her that. She is fully responsible by the grace and the mercy of God for where I am today in terms of doing everything that I'm doing today because I can truly say, had it not been for this experience and dealing with my mother and on this caregiving journey, I would not be the woman who I am today. I would not be the motivator who, that I am today, the life giver, the exhorter. I would not be that person because my state of being back then was just to go ahead and have a thousand jobs and pay off all my bills and then begin to live for myself. That was my state of being and my state of mind for that time. But God had another something else in plan. You know, so I'm just grateful, and, and I'm grateful because I see God's hand on the things that I do. And when we remain grateful to him, not because I am so great, because I am so far from that, but because I simply said yes. And a simple yes will go so far, and God will begin to expand our territory. He will begin to open doors of opportunity because he knows our heart. And when we understand that there is pain, purpose to our pain, when we understand that he has not forgotten our labor of love, when we understand that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and when we say yes to him uh, ordering our steps, he begins to do some awesome things in the midst of us. So I'm excited because I'm only looking for great tour things to come. And every time I get an opportunity and I do something, I just sit here and I'm like, Mommy, you know what? I'm doing this, and I'm doing this on your spirit because my mother was a praying woman, and, and I appreciate that. From when I was younger and all that, she was not a praying woman, but when she got older, she gave her heart to the Lord, and she believed God. She was a strong woman. She wanted God's best for everyone she came into contact with, and that legacy of her love, I'm, I'm endeavoring to carry out this day through everything that I do, and especially in ministry. So... You know, I'm I'm just grateful, Kelly. I am. I am so grateful. And I really, as often as I tell my story, as often as I try to articulate uh, how I feel and what this time has been through, I can't fully put it in words because it has truly been a godly ordained experience in my life that I couldn't have put this together even if I tried to write this story myself. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow, there is a purpose to our pain, and a simple yes will go far. You know, that, I mean, I really pray that those who are listening to this message and this call, that they would be encouraged and they would be motivated to continue to be obedient to the Lord and to walk in the calling that he has given you and to not neglect any of the gifts that he has given you because they are far reaching more than what your human eye can see. Because as the word says, the Lord's ways, they're so much higher than ours. His thoughts are so much higher than ours. You know, we look at things from the surface and from the fleshly eye, not really understanding the depth or the magnitude of the plan that the Lord has for our lives. So I thank you so much for sharing that with us, Marcella. And I'm just, 
following the leading of the Holy Spirit, and I just want to shift a little bit, and I want to ask right now if there's anybody on the line who has a prayer request um, that has anything that they want to share or want us to lift up, if you would hit five star now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Lord and we're going to pray about those things today before we leave this call right now. So if anybody has anything that they want to lift or anybody that they would like to lift up in prayer, if you could hit five star. And what we can do while I'm waiting for um, people to do that, I I mean, all your words have been encouraging, but I'm just going to ask if you could spend a few moments in exhortation um, as the Holy Spirit leads you, and then we will check again to see if anyone has any questions, any prayer requests that they would like for us to address. We will do that at that time. Okay. Amen. I just want to bring to remembrance the scripture, uh, Galatians 6 and 9. It says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And that's the thing that I want everyone to remember. We do get overwhelmed, and life does appear to be heavy to us, and it seems like no one understands, and it feels like we are in this thing alone. But I want to encourage each and every one of you who are on this call today to not um, look with your natural eyes and don't listen with your natural ear because if you look with your natural eyes and you listen with your natural ear, you won't see um, as far as God wants you to see in the midst of your situation. The doctor said several things to me about my mother during that time, and they were they were piercing to the heart. They were overwhelming, and there were days where I could not see the light of day. But I remember God's word when he says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God has not forgotten us. He is concerned about us. And how I know that he's concerned about us in Psalms 33, it talks about, and I think it's the 13th, um, 13th verse, Psalms 33 and 13, it says, The Lord looketh from the heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. God is concerned about us, and he sees and he knows what is going on in our lives, and he will not forget the labor of love. That talks about that in the book of Hebrews, that we have shown towards men, that we have shown on behalf of him. When we care for others, when we love on others, when we trust God uh, to be uh, the God that he is in our lives, and we take the time to pray for other individuals, God, God blesses us in such an awesome way. All is not lost. I don't care what it looks like, and I don't care what you're going through today. All is not lost. God is with you, and just like he brought me through, and the story may have not ended the way that I wanted it to end, but it has ended in a way that because I held on that I am reaping in due season. Season. My mother is no longer here with me in the physical, but I know that she is with me in the spirit. And because I know that, I'm determined to go on and to see what the end is going to be. Because one thing for sure, death will happen and all of us on this earth. We will experience it. There is nothing that we can do. The only thing that we can do to not have to deal with it is leave here first but we're going to have to deal with it. But when we trust God, and one thing that has been a blessing to me, and Kelly, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this to you on Facebook, there's a gentleman, um, an apostle, he found me, and he has this um, this group on Facebook, and it's called Grieving Together. And that group has been such a blessing to me. Our, he posts different things that are so real, that are so on point, that allows us to be honest about the things that we experience and that we go through. And when you're honest with God concerning the things that you experience and you feel, he does not hold you accountable for that. He doesn't judge you because of it. You can say, God, why? You can ask God and say whatever you want to him. And when you do that and he sees the sincerity of your heart and you make a decision that you're not going to do to in order to be be in a pity, woe is me mode, because no, there is no woe is me. God blessed me with 51 years of my mother, and because of that, I am going to do my best to remember all of the nuggets and all of the prayers and all of the joys and all of the memories 
that she shared with me during that time. So I say that not to dis encourage you, those of you who are caring for loved ones and, 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 and they're still here, I want you to continue to pray. I want you to continue to lift up. I want you to continue to love. I want you to continue to walk in faith. I want you to continue to believe God because God is still in the healing business. And when you look through your spiritual eyes and you look through your spiritual ears, God will reveal himself in a way to you that you can only, uh, you can't even put in words. So be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. Be inspired today. And one thing that I always say about Motivate and Pray, our motto, our theme, is that you make prayer the first response in every area of your life. We motivate you, but we motivate you to make prayer first because when you make prayer first, it does not necessarily mean that everything will change. But no, if you want to uh, trust him, if you want to have peace and endure, in order to get through, if you pray first, he will give you the ability to um, come to him. He will give you the ability to love on him. He will give you the ability to endure and walk in peace as you continue your journey. Because he allowed this journey to happen in your life, not to kill you. Life is not designed to kill you, but life is designed to bring out the best in you. So when you allow him to bring out the best in you, you will begin to see the best in yourself and others will begin to see the life, the love, the strength of God that is on you and it will cause people to change their lives because truly you are an agent of change in this earth and everything that you experience. It has a story to it, it has a reason for it, and it has a reason with it, and God will turn what the enemy meant for evil, and he will cause it to work together for your highest good, because we believe God and we believe his word, and we know that Romans 8 and 28, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them who have been called according to his purpose. So what I say to you tonight, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Kelly? Wow. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for those words of exhortation and encouragement. And at this time, I'd like to just give another opportunity, um, because before we get off this call, we are going to uh, end in prayer. So if you have a prayer request or even just a comment or anything you would like to share, if you just hit five star, that would be wonderful. Looks like we have someone. I'm not sure of the name. I'm going to unmute the line. Okay, your number ends in 2200. Yes, my name is Rolanda Phillips. How are you doing? Hey, sis, mm-hmm. how are you? I'm holding on. Um, I just just continue praying for my mom. Um, she's going through um a lot of different um uh, um. Sorry. She's going through a lot right now, as well as me. So I just ask her for a prayer for the both of us. Okay, definitely we'll do that. And do, would you like to give us your mom's name so we can just her by name? You don't have to. It's up to you. Yes. No. Um, her name is Marie Phillips, and um, she's um, diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia. Okay. And, um, and um, depression as well. Okay, we will lift you both up in prayer. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to mute your line back. Okay, I know this is my mom. Your line is (coughs) unmuted. Oh, I just want to thank Marcella for such a wonderful sharing um, to bring out so many fantastic points, and especially about the single mom being a caregiver, moms, period, being caregivers, uh, all the things that you have uh, shared with us tonight have been so informative, so inspirational, and I guess I can hardly wait to tune in to motivate and pray. <laughs> so, <laughs> know that God bless you, Mom. Pardon? I said, God bless you, Mom. 
Oh, bless you. You are a blessing. And I am so grateful to hear you say how you needed to carry on and do what God was calling you to do while you were going through with your mom. It's like God's ministry does not stop. No matter what we're called to do, he gives us the strength to carry on and if we have the will to do his work. So I just wanted to say thank you tonight and continue on and let him use your life. Amen. Thank God bless you. Thank you so much for those kind words. Okay, thank you. I'll put your line back. Does anyone else have a prayer request or comment or anything they would like to share? You can hit five star. And while we're waiting just to see if there's anyone else, if Marcella, if you can share with everyone um, how they can get connected, how they can contact you or get connected with um, Motivate and Pray and caring for the caregiver, that would be great. Uh, thank you again, Kelly. Uh, Motivate and Pray, if you are on the Facebook community, you can look us up on Facebook on uh, Motivate and A&D Pray. Um, if you have access to Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter at, uh, at the at sign Motivate and Pray, and also we're on Instagram. If you do not have access to uh, Facebook or are not a part of that community, you certainly can reach us by sending an email to Motivate and A and D Pray at gmail dot com, and you can reach out to us. We have a strong email community, and if you send us an email, we certainly respond right back to you. And we're just always um, um, just delighted to just be connecting with everyone across the country. It's just been a tremendous blessing. And you can find me also on Facebook at Marcella Moore or Sella D Motivate. So um, I'm out there in social media wo uh, world, and you are certainly welcome to connect with me. Um, by any of those means. And again, we have our Saturday morning call every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then Caring for the Caregiver, we do that on the third Wednesday every month. So that's just a set, a set that the dates change, but it's the third Wednesday of every month. And we also have a group on Facebook called Caring for the Caregiver that you're certainly um, um, I open the door and invite you to join us there as well. And, and the awesome thing, Kelly, if, I, if you don't mind, let me say this. Caregiving is such a large, um, there are so many areas in the caregiving thing and that, um, you know, there's so much. And, and I'm so delighted that Kelly is doing this because it's a tre tremendous blessing. So with, with Kelly's call, radio show, and with my call, the thing is, I made a decision um, when I started, when I when I really accepted Motivate and Pray, and I accepted Caring for the Caregiver, when I accepted those calls, and I made a decision that I would become for others what I longed for when I was doing that because I did not have um, a, a contact person. I didn't have anyone speaking to my life. I didn't have a, a support call to be able to call to on a spiritual level that they can speak to my life. So these things were birthed because we want to see, myself along with Kelly, we want to see those of you who are on this caregiver journey, we want to see you successful in it. We want to see you walking strong. We want you to understand that especially we say self-love is not selfish. We want you to empower yourself so that you can empower and speak life and love on the individuals who you are caring for. So please don't take these opportunities lightly. Call in. Put it on your calendar. Make sure that you stay connected so that you can understand all of this. And then because unless you've been there, you really can't understand it. And I know people often say, I know, you know, I'm praying for you and I'm thinking about you, but those of us who have been caregivers or are caregivers, we know, we sympathize with each other's feels, and that's what these support calls are all about, so that we can encourage one another. So our next Caring for the Caregiver call is, I believe, is December 17th of this month. And on that call, we are going to have three nurses sharing with us. 
and they are going to give us their insight, their wisdom concerning the what they experience and as caregivers in the nursing field, but what they what recommendations they can give to you because they see family members of the patients. They see what you go through and what you experience and they will give um, some life giving information that will help empower you on this journey. Amen. Wow. I can't wait for that. Thank you so much, Marcella. This has been an amazing time. And so we just thank you so much for joining this e- joining us this evening and sharing all that the Lord has placed on your heart to share with us. Um, if you're on this call and, and if you're listening to this, it is not by accident it's that the Lord ordained for you to hear this call on this evening. And so I pray that you have been blessed by her words. And I thank you all, our listeners and fellow caregivers, for spending this time with us. Just want to remind everyone to please visit our website at www.thecaregiverscircle.org where caregivers connect. Please check out our blog there. And also feel free to submit your prayer requests. You can submit prayer requests 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, You can also connect with us on our Facebook page, which is the Caregiver Circle, and you can follow me on Twitter at Kelly Caregiver, and um, our email address is info at caregiver circle, I'm sorry, at thecaregiversircle.org. We are going to prepare now to close, and um, I'm going to ask Marcella to close us out, and we'll be praying for all of you and lifting up a special prayer for Rolanda and her mom. Amen. Amen. Father, we just bless you and we thank you for this day that you have made. And as your children, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you so much for everything that you have said and done during our time together tonight. We thank you for comforting those who need to be comforted. We thank you for strengthening those who need to be strengthened. We thank you, God, for just informing us and enlightening us and giving us information that will help make us better on this caregiving journey. Father, I lift up each and every one who is on this call tonight and those who will listen to the rebroadcast and the replay. God, we trust and we believe that because you are the creator, because you sit in the midst of the heaven looking upon us, because you are so concerned about us, we're trusting you, O oh God, to just continue to allow your perfect will to be manifested in our lives. We trust you and we thank you for our mothers and our fathers and our sons and our daughters and those who we are caring for at this time. We lift them up before you in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for every caregiver right now. I pray and I ask that you wrap your loving arms around each and every one of us and that you allow that grace that is sufficient for us, that grace that helps, God, as we walk, as we continue to move, God, that grace that helps us to understand the process that you are taking us through this night. I thank you for allowing that grace to be upon us in such an awesome way. God, I speak this night. I speak joy. I speak peace. I speak life. I speak all that you are, and I ask all that you are to be manifested in each and every one's life tonight. God, I bind the spirit of depression that would try to come and tear down and break down, and I speak your life. I loose your life this day in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of sickness and infirmity and diseases, God, that dwells on the midst of those that we're caring for. We speak your life unto them. We speak your healing virtue unto them. And we pray that you would anoint them afresh from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, God. But moreover, that you would have your way in their lives, God. Stir them up. Move upon them. Let them sense your glory. Let them feel your glory. Let them know that you are with them, God. Despite the circumstances, despite of what the doctors say and say it is and it is not, we know that we believe your report. And one thing that we know for sure, that you are still in the healing business. So, Father, we 
thank you tonight, and we thank you for Kelly and the vision and, God, the wisdom that she has concerning what she wants to invest in your body concerning caregiving. We pray for the caregiver circle tonight, and we thank you for expanding its territory, for allowing your will to be birthed in it in the name of Jesus. And, God, we're just delighted because we know that your kingdom work is being established in the midst of the caregiver circles. So we thank you so much for making for making provisions, God, everything that is needed to ensure that this ministry continues to move forth. We thank you that it is so this day in the name of Jesus. So, God, we thank you. We continue to pray for Rolanda and her mother Marie. We continue to lift them up. We've been praying for them, God, and I pray that you would even move upon Rolanda in a way, God, that you would give her a confidence and the courage for her to stand up as the woman that she is, to stand up in the authority that you created on the inside of her. God, give her vision. Give her insight. God, show her who she is in you. God, we hold our hands tonight. We uplift her tonight, trusting you that your perfect will will be done in her life. God, we thank you so much, Father. We just thank you for everything. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you. And we say thank you in advance for everything that you're doing in the midst of our lives. We love you tonight, God. We love you tonight, Jesus. We love you tonight. And we say thank you. We thank you for everything that you're doing in us because we stand on your word, and we know that your word is true. We know that your word is right, and we know, God, that you shall have your way in our lives. We, we, love, we love you. We magnify you, and we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, um, Marcella. I, I so appreciate that. I, I'm just so grateful for the Holy Spirit's presence. Um, I, I just feel it so strong, and I, I, I'm so grateful. And before we um, end the call, I just what came to my mind again is when you were talking earlier and you were just saying how, you know, when your son finally, when he graduated from high school, how you thought you were going to have this time to yourself, and then your mom got sick. And the point with the Lord just kind of brought out so clear is that life is so full of transitions. Transition is constant, but he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so I just want to continue to encourage you all to cling to him. He has every single thing that we need. And so just thank you so much. I want you all to remember that you can do all things, including caregiving, through Christ who gives you strength. Thank you and good night. Good night, Kelly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night.